Hey friends, this is T again with another video and today we're going to be exploring the high inflation that's going on right now and how it is affecting people. Now we all are going through a lot of changes, you know, we either changing our lifestyle or we got to borrow money or we got to sell something at the pawn shop or, you know, some people are even going into criminal activity because everything is so expensive now. But today we're going to be reviewing people complaining about how this high inflation are affecting them. And it's not just affecting people on an individual basis. It's also affecting companies too as well because we're getting a large amount of companies just laying off people or they're closing stores. I mean, they're making all kinds of changes. And it's not just the poor that's struggling or making changes in their lives. It's also the middle class, it's also the rich. A rich the rich people aren't investing in things as much as they were before when things were going good. It's affecting everyone. And today we're gonna to watch some videos of people and telling their stories of how it's affecting them or their opinions about how it's changing the landscape these days about how people are living financially, okay? But before we do, please like, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know whenever we come out with new videos, okay? All right, let's get with it. Does anybody remember when $100,000 was like a livable income? Or when there wasn't ads on like YouTube, Instagram, or even TikTok? Like, I can't tell you how many times a day I get a stupid TikTok shop ad. I'm not going to shop at TikTok shop. I don't know how to get them to go away. Or like, all that really mattered was what kind of makeup you're wearing or... I don't know, carving out your eyebrows the right way. I honestly wish that I was my age like 10 years ago, back whenever it was easier to get a house, to pay for things and, you know, make a livable income. These days are hard, man. And all I'm trying to do is just live a good, normal life. I'm not really that extravagant, but uh, it's just tough out here. I'm curious, does anyone else just want to cry after leaving the grocery store every time? Because I do. I just spent $140 on essential stuff. Milk, bread, eggs, dog food, stuff for my kid's school lunch. Like, I didn't even... I, I couldn't even buy chicken. It was so expensive. I tried to shop sales and I used a few coupons. Like... I'm gonna like start selling my feet pics or something like I don't know what to do because like my mind is like blah, blah, blah. I'm spending this much money on groceries and like winter's coming well it's basically here and the electric bill is gonna go sky high fuel oils out the wazoo to heat our home and the pressure of this inflation is just awful I feel so bad as a parent like I can't spend the extra dollars to buy my kids some Oreos like <sighs> I want to cry oh my gosh I don't know if I'm just salty because I'm wearing Crocs in the rain and my socks just got wet or if I'm a full-blown adult right now but either way this is pissing me off I just went to the grocery store and all I needed was a lemon I go to the little produce section it says lemon one dollar one lemon i was at harris teeter so luckily it was buy one get one free but either way two weeks ago i went to the store and i bought a whole bag of lemons for a dollar and fifty cent so why am i paying one dollar a whole dollar for two itty bitty lemons when really i'm paying for one lemon and i had a deal when i just paid a hundred a dollar and fifty cent for eight freaking lemons something is not right and this is why i don't be trusting america because how did inflation happen that quick what's going on yeah everything is really getting affected by the grocery store man you could go to a grocery store back in the day and buy a hundred dollars worth of food but now you can only buy the same amount of food for $30. I mean, it happened to me, it happened to all of us. Like I said, I don't care how much money you're making, 
But when you see the differences when you take a car uh, to the mechanics or when you buy food for your family or just items that you need at home, everything is really expensive and it shouldn't even be that expensive. I believe that there's a lot of stores and chains are taking full advantage of it. Now there's a situation like in California where McDonald's uh, minimum wage were raised, I believe to 20 to $25 an hour. And because of this, now it's even more expensive to buy something from McDonald's. We're talking about a meal could come up to $25. And it's just the same when you go to the movie theater, man. You're pretty much paying for a meal when you're just buying a ticket and a, a, a small thing of popcorn. Very expensive these days. And people are struggling and they're noticing the difference. Back in the day, stores were able to slip in little um, price raises on you without you even noticing it now. But because now that everybody is penny pinching, now everybody noticing the smaller thing, just like this woman right here, noticing the prices of lemons, man. I mean, how many people would complain about something like that unless things are just getting outrageous? And it's everything too. When it comes down to your car payments, insurance, um, home owners association is raising their prices, you know, fixing your car, uh, buying your kids clothes. Everything is just becoming crazy now that everybody is thinking about, or at least a lot of people that I've heard is thinking about moving out of America. Cause right now they are saying it's starting to become too expensive to live in the United States. And then we got a lot of immigrants coming in and a lot of money is going towards them, which is less for actual Americans that have to, you know, struggle and nobody helping them. Very difficult for everybody. Everybody is struggling in some way. It's affecting everyone. The only ones that's not affecting is the elites. The elites are seen to be getting by. They still going on their trips. They still um, fly, flying in private planes. They still on the yachts. They still partying. They still going to Met Galas. They still doing pretty much the same thing that they want to do. They're the ones that's not getting affected. And they're the ones that's not complaining. But I'm telling you, man, it's really, really tough out here right now. Janet Yellen finally admitted that she was wrong when it came to inflation. She predicted that inflation would be transitory and it wasn't a big deal and nothing to be super worried about. And today she finally conceded and said, oh, there was a lot of stuff I, you know, I didn't know. And OK, explain to me, Janet Yellen, why there was an entire group of people then who were able to predict that was going to happen. Pretty much anybody who wasn't a Democrat was like, this is going to result in incredible inflation that's going to last and it's going to be very damaging to the American people. And here we are. Inflation is completely insane. Food is costing a fortune. Gas is the most expensive it's literally ever been in history. I mean, it's crazy. They're saying inflation's 8%, but when you look at it, that's gotta be an average of a few things that haven't inflated at all, averaged out to other things. Because yesterday I read budget pasta is up 50%. We see our meat is up like, what, 20 some percent? Um, I know hot dogs were up 7% from Memorial Day. Some of the you know bread and things like that were up 14%. This is an insane amount of inflation. And it seems to me, that there was an entire group of people that were like, no, you're wrong, Janet Yellen. This is going to be insane inflation. And here we are. So my question is, how is it that Janet Yellen, who runs this whole thing, was not able to accurately predict inflation, but a whole other group of people were? Seems to me that that was a kind of um, partisan persuasion that was denying it was going to happen. I don't, I don't know how many times people in this administration have to be wrong. Listen, I am an equal opportunity critic. So my assumption is we're probably going to see a takeover by the Republican side when it comes to the midterms. And honestly, I'm kind of looking forward to that so that I can see what they're going to do and offer up some criticism. Because right now, the truth of it is, is that the left controls everything. They control all three branches of government. So the criticism is going towards the left because they control everything. Let the right control some stuff and I will be happy to offer some criticism. Happy to. Right now though, all the power is held on the left. So you guess what? Y'all are getting all of the criticism because you've been wrong on virtually everything. 
And it's very frustrating to constantly gaslight the American people when they call you out for stuff that's clearly not going to be true and you gaslight them to make them feel like they're freaking crazy for thinking something when you can look at the data and see what it is. It's just, it blows my mind. I, 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 I just can't anymore. We need to have a conversation about the four income groups in this country. There's the 1%, just take that off the board. You know, even if they leave their third wife for their fourth wife and they lose another billion, they're fucking fine. Then there's the 10%, the people making like 250K and above. You know what, if they get into financial ruin because of their fourth boat loan, that's on them. Your 249,000 to your 80,000 people, they're comfortable-ish, but they are living in credit card debt. They might have two cars in the house. They are pulling $100,000 in student loans behind them. They are just, like, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. It, it's not like they're making money. Do not get distracted by the 12-year-old here on TikTok who makes a million dollars a post. Is they are the exception, not the rule. And then you got your 75000 and below people. They're not paying their bills. They can't pay their bills. And before you haters come and like, well, they should get a job. These are people working 40 to 80 hours a week, plus a side hustle, plus feet picks, plus doing whatever they can. But it is just not enough to be able to afford basic services. Every time I post a video of something like this, people in the comments will be like, you know, at the buck 50 tree, I, I buy a pack of tortillas and a bag of cheese for the week, and that's my meal. If it goes from the buck 50 tree to the $2 tree, I'm gonna have to choose between the tortillas and the cheese. We are not okay. Despite what the media says and despite what people are posting about the most recent TikTok viral purchase, despite the Kardashians spending people's yearly salaries on one birthday party for one fucking child, the average American, just basically the average person everywhere, cannot fucking afford to live. We have to stop looking at the exception and look at the reality. Instead of these viral fucking trends of what I'm buying for Christmas, trend of like here's my cupboard here are the four pantry items that's it that is all my food for the next month you need that reality to stop making it to the top of tiktok not this other bullshit complaining about food prices and y'all motherfuckers be like ain't you rich why you complaining about lettuce why you complaining about this that just goes to show me when you be when you become successful when you have money you're gonna it. you're gonna go broke soon because y'all not budgeting I get a summary of the money that's being spent in my home every week. So when I'm starting to see that like groceries is like tripling up, it's like, hey, yo, what the f is going on? I want to see for myself what the f it is being spent on. And like when I go to the f supermarket, like I went to the supermarket, I'm seeing that everything tripled up. That like lettuce was like two dollars a couple of months ago, and now it's like f seven. Of course, I'm gonna say something. The because if I think that shit is crazy. I could only imagine what middle class people or people in the hood is motherfucking thinking. So yes, I'm going to say something. The f and I have a big platform, so I do want anybody that's responsible of these f prices to put that f the f down. They're gonna see my f they might put it down. So shut. Wow, we even got Carly B complaining about inflation, and you'd be wondering, Carly B is making a lot of money. She also mentioned it in this TikTok, but yet she is complaining about it. People are wondering what is the situation. I think she has buyer remorse because not only did she vote for Biden, but she also supported him. She did a interview with him to show that she was backing him. And now people are upset with her because now she's on TikTok complaining about how things are going sideways and she shouldn't be saying anything because most people think because you are rich that you shouldn't complain about inflation, but inflation affects everyone. It just doesn't affect affect poor people or just the middle class it affect us more but it also affect the rich when it comes down to what they buy what they invest in they also got to make decisions sometimes they got to close down these stores or their businesses things happen to everyone when inflation goes out of hand it is not just happening in the west it's happening all over the world everyone is infected but yet Everybody want to jump all over Carly B because she's complaining about it. Yes, she does have some responsibility for backing this man up for no reason. And some people have an issue with the fact that she is complaining about Biden. But she made it clear recently that she's not going to vote for Biden or for Trump. She's not, she's not going to be involved in these things anymore. But yet she's still complaining about inflation. I mean, everybody got room to complain or the right to complain. You know, it's on them. But people are really really harsh on her because of the stance she took before and her involvement and why now we have a president and an administration right now 
that are responsible for our inflation. And yes, they are responsible. Whoever's in charge going to get the blunt of the responsibility of what's going on in America, whether it be Trump or Biden. If you're screwing up, you're screwing up. Now, a lot of people are complaining about this administration uh, dropping the ball when it comes down to our financial situation here in America. So you can't get mad at Carly B because she did support Biden and this administration. But you know what? People can change their mind. And I think she should have the right to change her mind. I know we keep talking about how expensive groceries are, which they are. I know we keep talking about like how much restaurants are and the drinks and the hookah and the nightlife, which they are. But why are we not talking about these fast food restaurants going up too? Let's talk about it. So I'm leaving the gym. I normally don't take like my wallet and shit to the gym, which I'm going to start doing. But anyway. So I don't have like my cards and stuff with me. So I'm like, damn, I'm a little hungry and I got to go get my son from the bus and stuff. So I'm like, let me see how much money I got in my armrest. Open my armrest, boom, couple of dollars, right? No, these couple of dollars would have been okay a couple of years ago. Probably could have got me a whole meal with $5. $5 in 2024 ain't shit. That literally will probably only pay for my motherfucking anybody else just trying to survive survive inflation survive the kroger survive the grocery store prices survive all the things to exist but also be seemingly happy and live life to the fullest not question what happens after we die just live laugh love our asses down the freaking sidewalk to all the things but also sensitive but also badass and also angry because they're hungry and also need some cuddles and also wants to read a book and also wants to take a nap and also wants to travel the world but doesn't have any money because of Kroger and the grocery store. Does anybody else have a moment? Anybody else? Also, TikTok, like, I don't even know what I'm doing on here. I just am having a millennial crisis on TikTok, so <sighs> thanks. Thanks for coming to my, my TikTok. Yes, it's totally understandable why people are afraid and stressing out right now. People don't know if this is going to get any better. I mean, you know, we're getting constantly lied to people telling us, hey, things are really good right now and things are going up. The interest rates are great, you know, but nobody believes that people eyes are open right now to what's really going on. All they need to do is check their bank accounts and they know that they are struggling, going to stores, going to the mechanic. Everybody know the prices are rising at an exponential rate. People are just afraid, stressed out. Now, I'm saying that couples are going through this as well, but at least they have somebody to lean on. But can you imagine single people, especially women, they're not used to struggling this way. Usually it's either a man or the government usually bail them out, but not in this case. Right now they're losing jobs and the responsibilities aren't going away. They still got to pay their rent. They still got to pay their mortgage. They still got to pay their car payments. Everything is changing for the worse and a lot of them don't know how to handle it. The only thing they feel like they can do is go on TikTok and complain about it. And it does help at, at certain levels because at least you know you're not alone. Everybody understand that all of us are struggling. Like I say, maybe you might look at yourself as either poor or middle class or rich, but nobody wants to go through what's going on right now. Nobody. I don't care what your position is. The only people that seem to be benefiting are the people that's caused all this inflation in the first place. But everybody else are angry and upset. And you can tell just by looking on TikTok or on YouTube how many people are mad and their eyes are being open as we speak. Okay? All right. This is the end of the video. I really appreciate all of you coming by. If you like these type of videos, please subscribe and leave in the comments that you enjoyed it. I enjoy making these videos and I appreciate it that you come by. Thank you so much again. This is T and peace. Thank you.